welcome to the next uh, video I've done some videos of the previous um, after installation tasks and in this one um, I want to do the researcher um, authorization so to get there we go to we click on the IR guide and then we go down to customization and then we go down to researcher authorization um, through an LDAP server so we click on researcher authorization okay in the introduction digital assets must only be managed by users authorized to do so DSpace can authenticate using ePerson accounts or using LDAP server accounts this wiki page describes a method of setting up DSpace to use an institutional LDAP server for user provisioning after that is done after that is done it is then up to the repository manager to define privileges for individuals on the repository okay please note um, for the LDAP to work correctly consistently it is suggested that all the user credentials must be in one LDAP server or replicated using one directory tree if you have a separate server for staff and students then authentication becomes risky and difficult to do there is a hierarchical LDAP um, setup which I haven't used which might work for um, LDAP institutions or institutions that have uh, complex LDAP uh, setups but this is set this uh, direct this um, this tutorial will concentrate on one LDAP server or using one directory tree structure okay for the requirements uh, very good idea to have a server firewall we don't want uh, unauthorized access and also to make secure connections so all the connections are encrypted so that the usernames and passwords aren't uh, sent out on the clear over the internet the other requirement is to talk to your IT LDAP uh, system administrator our central IT LDAP system administrator and from there find out which host names uh, the LDAP servers use which canonical context this LDAP servers use which objects context the LDAP servers use and which search context the LDAP servers use um, you'll see more of this later on when we do the configuration but um, the point is to talk to your campus LT, LDAP system administrator well if you don't have LDAP on campus here are some links uh, to help you get an LDAP going on your campus um, I assume most campuses use Microsoft Active Directory and here are some links on how to integrate with Microsoft Active Directory. Right, there are other authentication methods available and I have links to that. Uh, for example, you can authenticate by IP address only, you can authenticate via Shibboleth and you can authenticate via X509 certificate. And there's all the references to the um, official DSpace documentation about this. Okay, so we've got the introduction out of the way, we've got the notes out of the way, the requirements out of the way, so we're ready to go with step one. Okay, so the step one is to log into the server. If you remember correctly, we've got some several logging procedures, and I'm going to use the logging with the Ubuntu desktop. So what I've done is I've opened a terminal, and now I'm going to log into the uh, test DSpace that I installed on my uh, server. So I'm going to SSH in there as the DSpace user to the local machine 192.168.2.7 and then the password 09 Ubuntu 09 Okay, so we're logged in. I'm just going to type clear to keep it clear. So we logged into my machine and everything looks good. So to get the LDAP going, on, uh, we want to test it first on the server. So we must install the LDAP client utilities, so we do that, copy and paste it in there, and we press enter, and then the password 09 Ubuntu 09. Okay, so now it's going to install uh, all the client, um, all the client uh, packages. Now during the installation, it's going to ask you um, uh, about the object, might ask you about the object context, etc. It will definitely ask you about the LDAP servers. So you want to have these details ready um, when you do this installation, before you do this installation. So please, have all the details about the host names, the context, etc. ready before you do this installation. So now to do it, we press enter, and off we go, there we go. 
Now, um, we want to find out um, what um, are the LDAP server configurations. So I'm just going to open this up here quickly in a new, in a new tab just to see what our LDAP configuration is. Uh, LDAP server, LDAP there, the host names. Okay, so we use on campus the STB LDAP 01 and STB LDAP 02. So um, the provider URLs are just exactly the same as that there. So what we're going to do is we type it in here and we change this to LDAP there. And we take that column out and then we type in STB LDAP LDAP uh, 01.sun.ac.za and yes port right we can port number 389 and then we put in another another one stb zero two dot sun dot ac dot za and on port 389 as well and then we click ok then the <coughs> this is the canonical I believe this is the canonical um, context so um, this is our canonical context here this one here on our campus so we, I'm going to copy that one in there and see if this will paste in there uh, let's have a look is it paste now there we go paste in there so that's our the search base or the, the DN, DN of the search base. Um, there it's it's um, so you see our object context. If you look there, object context and our search context are the same thing on our campus. So this should work for both the search base and the the object context and the search context. So let's click on that. So we keep to of that version three. We're not going to make a local root database admin, no. Choose this option if you require to log into the database to retrieve entries. Does the LDAP require this? No. So we don't want to log into the database. And there we go. It's installing the um, software packages. Um, so you see there I had the details ready to go before um, configuring. And then we just wait for that to in there. So now we want to go and we have to do a little bit of trickery. Um, there has been some issues with LDAP um, with the LDAP um, setup on on DSpace. On I'm sorry, on a, a, on the, on the um, Debian-based systems. So this is a little hack. Um, that enables you to have one global location for the LDAP config file. Now if we have a look in there, if we're going to the LDAP, you see there's the LDAP config file. Now we don't want the LDAP config file to be in the etc LDAP folder. We want it to be etc LDAP.config. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that uh, config file to just make a copy of it and call it original. And we paste that in there. So now we have, if we look there, we have two files. Now then we remove that one. Uh, so we have a copy of the original file. Then we delete the original. And uh, paste that in there. So if you have a look there, we should just have the original file there. All right, then um, we still want the, an uh, LDAP conf, but we want to point to the etc LDAP conf. So we do this link. Yeah, to point to this. So we have one, only have one LDAP conf. This is a, an issue, I don't know why it hasn't been solved yet with uh, um, Debian yet, I don't know why. So there, the LDAP conf, the etc LDAP forward slash LDAP conf points to the etc LDAP conf. And this created a lot of confusion uh, with um, Debian and setting up the Debian there. Okay, so now we want, we're ready to now uh, configure the LDAP file. So let's just go back there. Good system of practice. And then we're going to now configure the LDAP conf file. And we copy and paste in there. All right, so 
let's see what it has set up for us from the installation there we have the base remember that installation we've got the base in there and we're using older version 3 we not, don't have to bind to the server to, to look up there uh, we're going on the port there uh, timeouts there, bind policy there uh, all of that we stay the same and password is all the same all of that still the same we don't do anything there all of that still the same so we want to see um, where did we where are the where do we um, set up the connections we put in those out of our credentials so we want to make sure that those um, server sorry the server IDs the server host names are used for the connection so um, as it mentions here your LDAP server um, must be resolvable without using LDAP okay uh, and we can either use the host connection uh, parameter or we can use the URI LDAP parameters there like this one and there it is um, from what we input it there it are oh, I can just get it there 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 it is from what we input it there it is there it's put it in there okay so if we have a look at the configuration example here uh, on our campus I use the host parameter instead of the URI LDAP parameter like there uh, that's up to you to use um, we're going to experiment I think we'll leave it here as the URI parameter and see how well it, it performs if that doesn't perform then use the host parameter to connect to the, the uh, LDAP servers so everything else is the same not much to change right so now we test it we want to test to check that um, we can do a search on the LDAP tree using just UNIX so let's try and do a search on my canonical host canonical name in the LDAP tree and we copy and paste that in there and press enter and if the LDAP servers are available on the internet we should get a reply but no we don't so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate being on campus um, I'm going to start up a VPN connection to our campus it shouldn't take too long uh, we use 40 client 40 net I think uh, to create VPN connections so there we go it's continuing and we'll wait for the connected okay there we are connected so now the tunnel is running so now I'm virtually on campus so I should be able to ping just to check I should be able to ping as std ldap 01.sun.ac.za server if I can ping it I should be able then to I should be able then to um, query it uh, to get um, to query it to get um, to check the uh, the setup uh, let's ping let's have a ping another machine on the campus let's see if we got a proper connection going here it doesn't seem so maybe the ping is disabled um, so let's try again to do that look up and see what happens um, not yet doesn't seem to work yet so you want to try and get this working before you do any um, before you do any further setup of this is to try and get this working on campus let's see what uh, address I have now I've got an ether one ether zero two seven uh, 56101 okay it seems to be uh, this machine won't be able to this virtual machine won't be able to look up 
on campus. Okay, later on when I am on campus, um, well, let's 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 log into a server that's already working, just to give you an example of how this would look on campus. So I'm going to leave that there. This is my local server on my local machine. I'm going to log into a server on campus by opening a new terminal there, and I'm going to log into a server on campus. Uh, I'll I'll log into our development server so that we can have a look. Repository.sun uh, because that is definitely going to be able to connect to the LDAP server. And then the password for that is yeah okay my campus password. Uh, let's get that in there. And we connected. Yes, I think we're going to get there. This is a virtual machine on campus on our virtual host. Takes a bit of time to log in. Okay, so now let's try and do that lookup and see if we get a result. Okay. And there we go, we get a result. So this is a machine on campus, and I've done the lookup. There, I, I, I typed in that search, LDAP search there to do the lookup. And it came back with the details from the LDAP tree. So if you get this kind of detail back, then you know you're ready to go uh, to set up the LDAP on your um, DSpace instance. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to, I just want to um, resize a little bit of this, if I can, I just want to get into the resizing there, there we go, okay, alright, so that worked, um, did it display any passwords, I wonder if I can copy and paste this out there, um, okay, there's no passwords. All right, I'm not going to make this public uh, information on the wiki, but there you can see um, what the LDAP uh, lookup did. All right, so once you've got that doing, then once you've got that working, then you can continue to the next step, step two. And sorry, I'm just... Uh, there we go, step two. Now the next step is to configure DSpace now to use this LDAP connection. Right, I just want to point out that there were some bugs with the net ID domain uh, when doing this upgrade. It seems to be solved, but very important in the DSpace config is to complete this net ID domain parameter. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, first of all, let's go back to our server. I'm just going to put this away. Let's go back to our local server and start setting it up. Now we've got to set up authentication to use LDAP. So we do that first. Uh, copy and paste and get authentication to use all that. If we go page down, you can see there's only password authentication enabled. So what we've got to do is we've got to add this LDAP there. So we add the LDAP, we copy that, we add the LDAP in there, and we right click and we paste it in there. And we just put in some nice spaces to make it neat, to line it up nicely. So there now we've LDAP. First we try LDAP and then we try password. Okay, so that's enabled. Then we write it out and press enter. No. So now we write it out uh, as CFG, that's right. right CFG. And then control X just to make sure that's correct. Let's look at it again. Yep, hold up authentication, control X right. Now we must configure the LDAP side. We've enabled the LDAP, now we must configure the LDAP config. So let's go and do that. LDAP authentication. And we want to use it almost, it's going to be almost the same as the um, server configuration, the one we tested with it. So first of all, we want to enable it, put it on true. Uh, we want to do auto register. I like to switch it off. Uh, uh, I like for our users to come in and, and verify that they've done a, um, that they have an account on the server. Uh, that's a nice way of keeping it false there. So they come back and, and then they verify they've got an account. Okay, so leave auto register as false there. 
All right, then we want to do the provider URLs. I'm just going to copy and paste my stuff in there. So you must put in your parameters there, your server parameter provider URLs um, that you've tested with, uh, and you paste them in there. So ID, ID field here, yeah, we just go back down now. Our ID field, we use CN as our ID field. So I'll just copy and paste that in there. When you see in as an ID field, you will have to find out from your campus, administ campus LDAP administrator. So our object context, uh, as you remember from earlier on from the configuration, is this one's really simple. So there's our object context. And then the next one is our search context. Uh, it's still it's the same thing, uh, same tree. Um, so I copy and paste that in there. Any of you are LDAP experts, you're welcome to let me know if this can be done better. So email field is the same as the default. So I'm just going to take that out. There's mail. My surname is the same as the default. That's fine. And then our given name is the same as the default is given name. And our phone field is the same as the telephone number. Okay. Um, here is an option to put the LDAP users into a group and there's a hierarchical LDAP settings. But I'm going to just leave that as it, as it is. That's fine as everything is looking good there. I just want to get to this point here, the net ID. It's very, uh, we must get to the net ID. We must fill that in there. There's a net ID domain. Okay, so we remove that and we must say that everybody gets an at sun. All right, and you put in your domain there at your campus so at up.ac.za at vits.ac.za, whatever it is. But you must set up a net ID, net ID email domain. Don't leave it blank, don't leave it commented out. You must set something up. Okay, so we save that. There's not much else to do, it's done. So we save that. Control O and Control X. So there we set up, first we set enabled. Uh, LDAP authentication in the first step. The second step, we configured that LDAP authentication. So, what's next? Let's have a look. Now, if we are using the XML user interface, uh, we want to update the messages. Uh, instead of saying net ID login or anything, we want to say campus login or email login. And let me explain that. Uh, let me show you that uh, on our test server. What that looks like here. Um, so ideally when you click on the login button here, there, it comes up with those terms, campus login and email login, because those make more sense to the users. Campus login means use your campus account, email login means use the email that you want to use to log in with. Okay, well, that's cleared up. So to, mo to modify that we copy and paste and yeah we just modify the XML user interface messages file and we copy and paste that in there and we look for uh, something let's look for dot title so control W and we look for dot title in the file there hopefully we find something page not found dot title let's try again no, right there Okay, so dot title is not a good uh, way to search for this, so let's search for it by, uh, let's try and search by LDAP, capital LDAP, and see what we find there. Okay, well there we have it. Uh, we want to look for dot title, uh, the org D space, not the XML one. We want to look for the other one, so let's look for the org D space one. Uh, we want to get past all of this. LW. There we go. Org LDAP authentication. And there it says LDAP authentication. LDAP is not going to mean much to any users on the on campus, so we change that to campus. Campus login. Campus login. There we go. All right, the next one uh, we want to look for password authentication title there. 
and this one says password authentication again that does not mean much to the users on campus so we've got to make it email uh, login authentication is just a bit too long of a word for that we want to keep it simple for the user so there we go we have email lo campus login uh, and then we have email login and we finished with that we save the file out there okay so now the login words make sense to the users all right, so what's next? All right, now we have to tell the application to use the secure login links uh, when you click on the login link. So we have to modify the DSpace config file to do that, and we copy and paste that, and carry on like that. And we look for this parameter there, force SSL, so let's look for that. Force, type control W to do a search, and you type in the search term and then we enable it there we go please make sure that the dspace hostname parameter is set correctly okay uh, as noted there so there we have force is as well equals true and we write that out and that's it then the next step is to rebuild dspace okay i'm not going to do that with this machine it takes way too long um but uh, I'll just demonstrate on our production Sun Scholar uh, what a working system looks like um, quickly just to show you okay um, and I've got the responsive theme running it's gone into responsive mode so I should have to I don't know why it hasn't come out here okay um, let's just go full screen quickly uh, just to show you so there we click on the login link there uh, and there's those two messages campus login and email login much more it makes much more sense than LDAP authentication and uh, password authentication so you click on the campus login um, and then you notice there the secure link is active there you see it, it turns into a secure link this is what you need you must make sure that when you click on the login link this turns into a secure link okay and that must be true as well um, with the email login it must also turn into a secure link there okay so once you have that going and you can you log in with uh, you get a couple of researchers to log in with their campus credentials and they log in and they register their profile and everything you've got a working system uh, and uh, well done to you and this is an essential uh, part of DSpace is to make sure that you protect the usernames and passwords of your researchers uh, if they're using a campus login system and that concludes my um, tutorial thank you very much